You said the, the pressure's kind of, it, it's on, but it's off, you know? Um, being able to lean on those guys is big, and both of them will share what they've learned. They're, you're readily able to share advice with, with any of us, and, um, but, you know, but more importantly, they're not like looking over us, like, you know, they have more experience. They're, they're one of our, I mean, we're, we're a cohesive unit, and, um, you know, those guys with that experience will help us win a bunch of games this year um, when we probably wouldn't without them. Do you feel like the, the timeline is a little bit more lined up for everybody, just given the kind of mid, I don't know, you guys are young, but you're not like that. I don't know what to call you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 I would just say the vision, like you said, is a lot clearer, right? Um, we're, we're trying to get better every day and be really exciting to watch and develop, you know, everybody throughout our entire roster to, you know, down the line, be able to compete at a really, really, really high level. And that's exciting for us as players, and it should be exciting for, for fans as well. Hi, Corey. Uh, congrats on your big summer. Thank you. You obviously took a big step forward last year. Mm -hmm. So what do you hope to improve on this season? I mean, I hope to pick up number one right where I left off. Um, I want to have, like, that elite, like, unwavering confidence in myself and my team. Uh, I felt like there were times last year where I would kind of float to the back and, and you know, get, get cardio, just be up and down a little bit while all the guys were playing. Um, and I can't do that this year. Um, that's one thing. And then also, um, while I improve on the offensive side of the ball, and that's where a lot of people kind of see me improve the most tangibly, I need to get just as good or better on defense as well. Um, there were times last year where I get subbed in and out of games at the end, kind of for offense, defense, and for free throws and stuff like that, and that just can't happen this year. If I want to be the player that I want to be in this league, you know, a couple years down the road, like that has to be a number one priority for me. And uh, a non basketball question What mm -hmm. was it like <clears throat> playing pickleball with Rob Riggle? Well, Rob Riggle didn't play pickleball with us, unfortunately, um, but I've watched all his movies. I'm a big fan, and uh, um, he did a really good job of seeing. But yeah, uh, if you can see from the videos, pickleball is something that I do in the offseason. I have a lot of fun doing that, and it was actually invented in the Seattle area. So I've been playing it since I was third grade, fourth grade. Corey, um, being a shooter is really important in terms of where you catch the ball, where you get it. A lot of guys have different spots they like to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, working with a new point guard like Tyus, how have you talked to him about uh, where to get you the ball in, in certain spots? Oh, believe me, I don't have to say anything to Tyus about where to give me the ball. Um, he is a professional point guard, and he's a professional setup guy. So, I mean, he's talking to me mostly about how he's going to try to get me open, how he's going to try to give me shots, how to try to get me going. And... Um, you know, not to be selfish, but like to play with a guy like that is, um, there's a reason why everybody who plays with Tyus loves to play with Tyus. And to have him on our roster is gonna be huge for me personally as a player and for us as a team. Um, he just makes everybody better. And lastly, uh, JJ Reddick mentioned on his podcast, he shouted you out as one of the shooters he's really excited to see this season. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to hear from one of the best shooters of all time that he's excited to watch you and has been watching your game for a while? Yeah, I mean, JJ and I have had conversations um, going back a couple of years and to see him, you know, not only compliment me on shooting, but he spent a lot more time complimenting me on what I do off the ball. Um, and that, to an untrained eye, is really hard to pick up. And obviously, JJ has watched basketball and played basketball for years. Um, but to point that out to people who, you know, might not necessarily see it was probably the coolest part for me. It was really uh, detailed and, you know, um, really happy he did that. It was, a, it was a huge shout out. So thanks to JJ. Hey, Corey. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Uh, we were talking to Coach Unseld last week, mm -hmm. and uh, he was asked about who the vocal slash moral leader of the team will be. Mm -hmm. And he actually brought up your name as one of the guys who could step into that role. You're only entering, you know, your third year, but how does it feel that Coach has that confidence in you, and are you ready to take that step as a leader? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of similar to Danny. I was standing in the back while you guys were interviewing Danny, and like I've only been here for this is my third year here. I feel like I'm still 18 at heart, but um, I'm like one of the longest tenured wizards in this locker room, you know. And with that, kind of buys you a little bit more voice. And people have seen the work that I do behind the scenes and on the floor. Um, you know, when you're a rookie or a second year guy, usually your voice kind of gets thrown in the wash. Um, people don't take it as seriously, but you know, with the credit that I've built up, combined with the longevity compared to others that I have in this locker room specifically, um, my voice carries a little bit more weight. So that's another area that I want to really improve on and take strides on is being a vocal leader, not only you know, an example, lead by example guy. Thank you. Corey, how does a, a team in a franchise that is kind of retooling or re whatever the word is, uh, heighten the accountability that players uh, need to play with? I think it, I mean, it, it heightens it a lot. It's, the accountability is still there. And, and 
Especially, I mean, you know, I said what I said at the end of last year about accountability and discipline. And, um, you know, that rings true no matter what you're trying to do. If you want to build a successful organization over a long period of time, like we're trying to do, um, you need to have accountability, not only between players, but between players and coaches, and then between coaches and players as well, like both ways. Um, and there's, there's no possible way you can put together a winning culture without that. So, you know, no matter if you're trying to rebuild or if you're trying to compete for a championship or if you're anywhere in between, you know, accountability is at the center of that. And we're not going to, you know, take that lightly at all. You were uh, very articulate when you talked about how much of a pass first, team first point guard Tyus Jones mm -hmm. is. When did you realize that? Was that from just watching him play uh, on TV or during these pickup games? Yeah, I mean, well, when you watch him play and when you play against him, that jumps off the page right away. Like when, when Tyus is on the floor, is the team that he's playing for is really hard to guard because he's really good at setting guys up and getting guys confidence. And then, you know, it didn't take long, maybe five minutes in pickup to realize, you know, what we what we have in Tyus um, during our pickup games. So um, he's going to be a huge piece for us, um, setting guys up and getting guys going. And even if he doesn't score the most points on the team, he's perfectly fine with, with doing what he does, which is facilitating. Both Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole were discussing how important it's going to be to have that off-ball movement. And you were just discussing that with what JJ Reddick said about how you have that ability. What do you see as being the, the top focal point for the chemistry regarding the off-ball movement mm -hmm. and Tyus being able to find you guys? Yeah, I mean, you kind of, I mean, you guys have been on the block. You've heard guys say that the ball has energy. And when you, when you ping it around the perimeter and you're making passes and making the extra play, um, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot more fun that way. And when you're doing it, chances are, and you're doing it the right way, chances are it's gonna come back to you. You know, that energy's gonna come back to you. And um, if we can grasp that as a team throughout our entire roster, um, it, when with the way that the rules are set up in the NBA, it makes it really, really difficult to guard and a lot of fun to play offense. So if you kind of can catch magic in a bottle and do it the right way, um, it's just a lot of fun to play that way. And that's the way I prefer to play. Hey, Corey, thank you so, for us again on thank you. great summer. Appreciate it. Um, just when a new front office comes in that isn't necessarily the people that drafted you, mm -hmm. what's the balance between you know trying to just show them, prove to them your worth, but also you know just getting to know them naturally? Yeah, I mean, it is a little bit of a delicate balance, but those guys have been in the NBA for a really long time, and you know they've seen all of us play probably more than anybody. Um, that's what their job is. So when they come in here, they know exactly who they're dealing with. And then kind of getting to know them on a personal level is just what comes with the job. So seeing them every day, you know, asking about their families, they're asking about mine, um, things like that kind of help calm the nerves down a little bit when you're meeting each other. Um, but the, the, both Will and, and, and Michael have done an amazing job um, from the jump. And, you know, us as players are really excited about the vision they have for us, um, you know, this year and years to come. Just how did that, how did they convey that vision to you? Is it a team meeting? Is it one-on-ones? How do they, you know, come in and say, "Hey, this is what we see for the mm -hmm. future." Yeah, it's a, it's team meetings, but it's also informal. I mean, he'll grab you at breakfast, or they'll grab you, you know, while you're walking in the hallway, and it doesn't need to be, you know, formal and dramatic in order for them to convey the vision that they want. So, um, they've been clear from the jump what they expect of us and you know what they're hoping for, and you know, us as players are going to buy into that because we believe it. Hey, Corey. So, um, I know I've asked you this in the past about your golf game and the translation to how you see things on the floor. How have you been able to utilize taking that time off the court, going on the course, playing the game of golf as frustrating as it can be, much like basketball can be, to preparing for this season and taking the next step for Corey, not just from an offensive standpoint, but as well a defensive standpoint? Yeah, um, my one of my biggest issues on the basketball court is letting things linger. So make a mistake and you let it linger five, you know, seven, 10 plays later. Um, that's been really hard for me my first two years to let stuff go. And in golf, it's the same thing. You hit a shot, you hit a bad one, and you have the time it takes for you to walk to your next shot to forget about it. And so that's kind of what I've been trying to focus on most and come up with ways, especially on the basketball court, to flush things and to, to play free no matter what happened previously. Um, and then you know it lets you play with more confidence unless you play with um you know less i guess like tightness uh, on the floor when you do it that way that's great cool.
Thank you.